we're going to do a little face trimming video on Luna here uh, just to give you guys an idea on how to do a better home face trim. So I have a couple tools here. I have my comb, a little small pair of safety scissors here. They have a ball tip so that they're less likely to poke a dog, but they're not foolproof. You can still cut them. Uh, and then I have my five in one clipper. You're probably not going to have one of these. If you're using a beard trimmer at home, you're going to want to be careful. Some of them do have an adjustment and you can set them to the right length for it to be fairly safe, but a lot of them are just going to be on a surgical setting, which can cause clipper burn and give your dog severe skin irritation. So you want to be careful using a clipper at home. So I'm going to comb her hair forward. On a dog with a snout, you want to use your less dominant hand to hold their face firmly but gently. I like to put my finger right in between their jaw bones on the bottom and my thumb over the bridge of their nose. This way they're not going to move suddenly without you knowing. If you're just trying to have their head in the palm of your hand, they're going to be more able to move and more able to get themselves hurt. So you want to have a nice firm grip, but not strong enough that you're going to hurt them. You want to brush the hair forward. Now Luna gets her eyelashes kept. So I'm going to take those and I'm going to put my thumb over them. You can put your comb down on the table. That's not going to be dangerous. If you're working with multiple tools with blades, you do not want to put them where a dog can step on them. I'm going to take my scissors. You want them at an angle where you're not going to get skin in the cutting surface. So you don't want to cut straight up and down and you don't want to cut flat because if they have little face wrinkles, the skin can get up in there and you can cut them. And if you're cutting straight up and down, you can get the eyelid. So you want it basically at a 45 out from the face. You're not going to cut them with the bottom of the scissors, so that's safe to rest on the bridge of the nose. And it's a little bit safer to have it resting than to be trying to cut loose out in the middle. So you, if you had an, a short-faced dog with more hair, you can put it right in here and you can cut across the middle here. Luna normally gets a clean face shaved like a poodle, so she really doesn't have a lot to show here. But she is starting to have some coming down over her eyes. A lot of the time when we see people trying to cut the hair on their dog's head at home, we get a lot of cut right here and not where they actually need it. So this is where you're going to want to So now I'm going to try and keep her eyelashes out of there because we like her to look so fancy. Normally, I would be using larger scissors to do this, but I'm trying to show you with what I would recommend for you to have at home. The smaller the scissors, the more control you're going to have and the less likely you are to get something in there that you don't want to cut. So I'm keeping it at the 45 away from her. And she knows that she's safe and she knows that she's okay. I'm not being mean. I'm not mad at her. Just nice and calm, but firm. 
if they feel like they can get away with it, they're going to try and do that. And that's going to be more dangerous than if you're just nice and calm and firm. Now if you need to switch sides to the other side of the dog, I'm going to put my hand under her chin here and my thumb on top. And I'm going to work from the corner of the eye. You probably won't be going this close to your dog's eyeballs with your first home face trim. But that's, you just need to get it so that they can see. And also for dogs with a lot of discharge, that's where you're going to really want to make sure you do the bath the night before. Get all of the eye crusties off. Get this area nice and clean. Because if there's a lot of buildup and you're trying to scissor, that skin might be pulled up inside and you're not going to be able to tell what's skin and what's hair and what's buildup. So you want to try and get that buildup cleaned off before you try cutting. So now I'm going to get in here and I'm going to keep that back of the scissors against the dog. And you can see that just pops the hair in there a little bit. Never blow the hair off the face because you're going to get hair in their eye and then they can scratch their cornea. Now from this side, flat of the blade against the dog, just get the hair. If you have a dog with a lot of face wrinkles, be very careful. So that is pretty good for Luna. We could probably take a little bit more off. Another trick is I will use my thumb as a stabilizer when I'm up here just to try and keep because the dog might be trying to move and that's going to keep my shears in the right position. It's a good idea to maybe have some saline solution on hand. You can see Luna does have a little hair in her eye. She tends to have hair in her eyeballs a lot. But then you can pull the bottom eyelid out, squirt a little saline in there, and that will help her flush that hair out without it irritating her eyes. If you're going to use saline in your dog's eyes, make sure that it is just a plain saline solution with no other additives. You don't want, some of them have cleansers, you know, mild acids for cleaning contact lenses and are not intended to go directly into an eye. If you're going to be using clippers, you want it on the 10 blade setting. This is going to be really good for a dog that will tolerate it. So you want to, very similar to the shears, you want to make sure that you're using the safe surface against the dog. The back of the blade is not going to cut the dog. On the 10 blade setting, the front of the blade is not going to cut the dog because there are teeth here and then the actual cutting surface is back here. So the skin has to get in here for it to actually cut the dog. So as long as we manage to not do that, so an eyelid going in there could get cut. For a dog with a very short snout, clippers are going to be safer because a lot of Shih Tzus can lick their own eye. So while you're trying to work in this region here, they're going to have their tongue coming up and getting in there. You can try to hold their mouth and put your thumb in front so that they're not licking. A lot of Shih Tzus also won't tolerate clippers on their face. So then you do need to have your small shears and you are going to try and have to make sure that tongue doesn't get in the way when you're working on them. If they lick the clippers or your shears, most of the time it's just going to be a very small nick 
much like a paper cut. It will bleed at first, but it usually will stab. Luna's going to fall asleep. <laughs> it may bore you, Luna. But if the bleeding does not stab, you may have to go to the vet. But usually if you let them calm down, stop working on them, maybe take them out to go potty, give them a break, and try to have them stop licking, because that's what's going to help the bleeding stop. So on the 10 setting, back of the blade towards the eye because you don't want to have them move and have the clippers go towards the eye. So you want to work away, but you do have to be very careful because they have little flaps on the side of their nose and if you're coming this way, you can get those. So you just want to get the hair. Just scooping. You don't want to press hard. Just basically think of the front of the clippers like a little tiny comb and you're just trying to comb that hair up and away. So that's pretty good. That gets a lot of that hair that's going to hold moisture and bacteria and cause issues with the skin under the eyes. And that's basically what you want to do is just get that hair out from where it's causing trouble and making it hard for them to see and making their face extra stinky. I'm going to try and take a little bit of this hair that gets wet when she's drinking and eating off. If you do a little face trim at home, generally, that's fairly safe. Working more around the mouth, the ears, and the rest of the dog, there's a lot of areas where things can, can go wrong. Um, when I was learning to groom and I was working on my other dog, Titus, at home, I cut his ear because I didn't know what direction the clippers needed to go in. The bleeding did stop, but that was fairly upsetting. It's very easy to cut your dog trying to groom them at home. Uh, if you can't control your dog, if you're not confident handling the tools, uh, I would strongly suggest just waiting or trying to find someone at a vet that can clip them. But if you are going to try these things at home, here are some of the techniques. So if I want to take some of this hair off her front lips, you can see it's discolored. It's always wet. She licks her lips a lot. She gets food in there. I'm going to hold her mouth shut firmly again. I will be able to feel if she's going to lick because you can feel the tongue muscles start to move down here with your thumb, but I'm going to hold her mouth so she can't lick. She has her front teeth, which is a plus. If you have a dog that doesn't have those front teeth, they're going to be able to stick their tongue out even if you are holding their mouth shut. It tickles a little bit by their nose. Not all dogs are going to tolerate clippers on their lips or around their nose. But that's going to help a lot for cleanliness. Another good place that I like to clip out with the clippers is the flu. You can see that that hair is very dirty. So you want to keep the edge of the clipper even with the lip line. So you don't want the clipper up here because then when she licks or one of these little flappy bits to her lip might get in there. So you want this corner because the cutting surface does not go any further than that. So this edge is safe. You're not going to cut the dog. Hold the lip back with my thumb. 
I hold her face with the rest of my hand. If you have small hands, this is going to be hard for you. Always know it's better to stop and try again later than push it too far and cut the dog. Another area that you're going to want to try and get at at home, and you're going to need clippers with a 10 blade, is the sanitary trim. If your dog has a tail, that's going to help you out because you can use it as a handle so that they don't sit down while you're trying to work on it. If it's a large dog, you can put your leg underneath them, put the whole dog over your leg, and then that will help hold them up. You're going to hold the tail with your hand firmly. You don't want to be pulling the full weight of the dog up with the tail, but you do not want them to try and sit down and risk cutting themselves. If there's a lot of hair and caked on feces, you're going to want to wash them the day before. Soak it really good. Don't try to pull the feces off while it's hard because you will just pull the hair and the skin. If it's been caked on there for a while, the skin is going to be soft, possibly infected. It could already be weeping and having issues and then you might need a topical antibiotic or ointment to help clear that up. But you just want to hold them up firmly and you want to have the blade like a 45 away from the dog in both directions if you you don't want to gouge at it because you don't want to get any of the small areas of skin in the clippers and you're just going to try to catch that hair from both directions you have to be very careful going up because if they sit that's when they're really going to gouge themselves with the clippers and you just kind of want to scoop the major long stuff up again you can use that corner of the blade because it's not going to cut and you can try and get some of that longer hair from the sides and that's probably about as close as you want to get you do not want to use scissors near their butt. It's just not really safe. There are some dogs that absolutely will not tolerate a clipper near their butt, but those are the dogs I would 100% recommend see a professional because the likelihood of you accidentally cutting your dog with scissors near their butt is just really high. Another area is going to be the sanitary down here. So for Luna, she's a girl. So this is where it gets messy back here. She had her bath yesterday. She's washed and dried, which is very important. If you're going to be working on their hair, you want them clean and dry because you're going to be able to see the skin better. So I'm going to hold her tail, lift up one leg, and I'm going to just try flat of the blade towards the dog, just scoop the hair a little bit. Same in the other direction. Just keep the flat of the blade against the dog and just try to scoop a little bit of that hair that's making a big mess back there off. I wouldn't go any closer than that at home by yourself. I've been doing this for 11 years and with her I would take that much tighter. But for you guys trying to just do a little self maintenance that is plenty close enough. If Luna was a boy 
I would look for the front of the penis. I would grab the skin and I would pull it forward. Dogs have a penis bone inside the sheath. You just want to pull the hair of the sheath forward and then you would just take that off the end. If they're having a lot of matting in between their legs, if they're intact, they may have matting around their testicles. You're probably just going to want to go to the vet and have them shave that off. It's very delicate. The skin can pull into your clippers very easily. If they're just having some matting out here near the inner thigh, you could probably, if you have a 10 blade, just take that off. Keep the flat of the blade against the dog and scoop out this direction. As far as sanitary trims, that is probably about as much as you're going to want to do at home. So just around the butt, around where they pee, either direction, and a little bit inside the thighs to make sure that they're not having matting in there. You need to be very careful. They have a thin flap of skin called the tuck up right here. That's very easy to cut. You never want to go this way. You always want to come from the inside out. So if you're trying to get in here and you feel that there's matting here, you need to be very careful and probably just leave that alone because if you get preoccupied trying to get the matting off with your clippers there, you might get the skin and it's going to tear when they move their leg and they're going to have to have it either glued or stapled. So that's not anything you want to mess with. First, do no harm. I know that they're probably stinky and gross and it's hard to live with, but we just need to get through this. Huh?